Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this week's hellish edition of 101 Facts. Oh, I did that weird at the end. My name is Sam, God of Trivia. Actually, less of a god, I would say more a snivelling little underling with delusions of grandeur. And today, we're taking a ride down the River Styx to a house, specifically the House of Hades. In, well, Hades. The indie video game darling that took the mortal world by storm. Lovely. But how quickly has one whiz kid ripped through the entire game? Which character can you rough it out with in a secret boss battle? And what's Zacharias' workout secret? Because look at those a- Oh, it's all the underworld fighting he does, isn't it? Right, okay, okay. Well, two out of three of those questions are going to be answered still, so prepare your godly boons and palms of power because we've got a mother to meet with 101 facts about Hades. Number one. Now, I know what you're thinking, what is Hades? And is Sam going to make a Hades nuts joke? Well, I just did then. But Hades is a PC, Switch, PlayStation and Xbox game. It's also a Catholic god, and they're kind of related. You'll see. Number two. Hades, the game, not the god, was created by Supergiant, a game company and not a supergiant. Are you with me so far? These guys are kind of game dev superstars, having made indie darlings Bastion, Transistor and Pyre previously. Number three. Supergiant Games are a very small team compared to most video game companies. In fact, as of 2018, there were only 20 employees working away to make these games of theirs. Number four. Hades is a game from what's called an isometric perspective. It means an angle that isn't side on nor top down, but a mix of the two to make it seem more 3D while also being 2D. Are you confused yet? This hasn't been a great start. Number five. Alright, so this game is broadly about a chap called ha Oh no wait, sorry, it isn't. It's about Zagreus, his son. He's rather had enough of living in the underworld and wants to escape, but his papa doesn't like that idea and makes it jolly difficult for him to leave. Number six. At the beginning of the game, Zagreus discovers that Nyx, who he believed to be his mother, actually is not his mother, at least not biologically anyway. His biological mother is Persephone, who previously escaped the underworld seeking Olympus and the Olympian gods. Number seven. No one knows if she ever made it, but Nyx points out that if she didn't make it to Olympus, she hasn't died, because she would have returned to the underworld, like everyone else does, via the River Styx. Zagreus' aim upon this discovery is to find his mother Persephone and also escape the underworld and his father, Hades. Hades not. Number 8. In Greek mythology, Hades kidnapped Persephone and made her queen of the underworld, though with permission from her father Zeus. Her mother Demeter was furious and forbade anything to grow until Persephone was returned. The cries of the starving people made Zeus force Hades to return her to Olympus. Number 9. But while in the underworld, Hades tricked Persephone by giving her pomegranate seeds to eat. Sounds nice, but tasting the food of the underworld, she was then cursed to spend her winter months back down there. Number 10. This is cleverly referred to in the game in the form of power-ups. You can acquire boons, which grants new abilities and perks, and what's known as poms, which look a lot like pomegranate, upgrade said boons. Number 11. Anyway, while we're on the topic of Zag, there's secret text in Zagreus' codex, basically the in-game biography, that can only be seen if you go into the files of the game. It's a big long monologue about mortality and the gods that is perhaps from Achilles' point of view, we don't really know. It's constantly added to though with new updates of the game. Number 12. Zagreus is voiced by Darren Korb, the audio director for the game, who also makes all the music. Must be a busy, busy guy. Number 13. Small side note here as well, Korb also voices Skelly, so in some areas, he's literally talking to himself. Number 14. Zagreus was designed to be a bisexual character lad, and this can be seen hinted at in the dialogue with the gods and other characters. In fact, he can romance both men and women. Number 15. Yes, the only thing that's hetero about Zagreus is his chromia. Okay, that doesn't make sense out loud, but basically, Zagreus has heterochromia, which means his eyes are a different colour from one another, each for one parent. Number 16. This heterochromia shows his two different ancestries, the gods in red and mortals in green. Mythology considers Zag to be the god of rebirth, which is where the idea in the game of him being a stillborn child revived by Nyx came from. Number 17. However, other details of Zagreus in Greek mythology are... Very sparse. In the game, he's the god of blood and or life, not rebirth. Although that would make sense as well, given how many times he dies and then comes back again. He's the only god who bleeds red blood. In mythology, gods bleed ichor, which is a goldish colour. Number 18. Zag was also known in Greek mythology as a god of hunting, just like Artemis, who appears in the game too and tells Zag that his name means great hunter. Number 19. Zag says to Eurydice that he's surprised that she's heard of him at all. Theseus calls Zag a nameless, long-forgotten minor god, born of the depths and bound to stay in them. 
These are all references to the fact that Zagreus isn't exactly well known in the pantheon of Greek mythology. However, this allowed the developers to use him as a near blank canvas of a character to develop him into a decent protagonist. Number 20. Once Supergiants thought of their setting for the game and thinking about the Greek underworld, they then had to think, well, what happens when Zack dies in the game? Because you're already in the land of death. This is where they came up with the idea to make the game a reverse Diablo, in that you're travelling through the levels of hell to get out, not deeper within. Number 21. Hades creative director Greg Kasavin said one of the things they wanted to explore in the game was that the gods of Greek mythology were, essentially, a dysfunctional family. This allows us humans to see ourselves within them. Number 22, ooh. The game was released in an interesting way. It was launched in 2018 as an early access title, but was then released officially out of early access in September of 2020. This meant that the Supergiant fans who played during early access actually helped shape the game into its final form with their feedback to Supergiant themselves. Number 23. Supergiant also noted that this kind of release meant that they could release the story in a serialized way, almost episodically with new updates. And you know what? That's what they did. New gods and areas and bosses were added with the many patches and updates. Neat, huh? Number 24. Oh, and also, it was released exclusively originally on the Epic Game Store, which was very new at the time, so it's an experiment all round. It was later released on Steam and other platforms. Number 25. During development, once a month, everybody at Supergiant would play the same version of the game for 90 minutes solid, before everybody congregated in a big meeting to discuss their feedback. This meant they got a variety of different play styles, for instance playing with a mouse and keyboard instead of a controller. Number 26. This also meant they could further polish the game. Fun fact by the way, Supergiant called the polishing process going to Poland, because Polish and polish, nice. Number 27. The game was announced and released on the same day in fact, at the Game Awards of 2018, again as I said in early access. However, the team were astonished to find that the URL at the end of the announcement trailer, playhades.com, actually 404'd if anybody tried to access it. Number 28. This was then apparently fixed by the time the end of the trailer came along, by the way. Which is, you know, pretty impressive. Number 29. As soon as the game went live, Supergiant workers went to watch live streams on Twitch and YouTube, and were astonished to discover a stream of one person who reached the end of the demo without dying once. In a game where dying is kind of the point, that was a huge deal. Number 30. After the game went live over the first 10 days, Supergiant gave out 6 new patches to fix any technical issues within the game, but also give them new content too, like new enemy types. Number 31. Players were tearing through the game so quickly and playing for such a long time, Supergiant had to change their roadmap. What was going to be the fourth update actually became the first, which they called the Chaos Update. Number 32. Oh, it was called that by the way because it introduced the character Chaos, and introduced the Chaos Rooms. A mechanic where you sacrifice life for better boons and perks and things. Number 33. To get the feedback from the fans, Supergiant created a special Discord with the room specifically set around feedback and fan experience of the game. Around 60% of the feedback was fine tuning details rather than huge overhaul fixes, like for example just tweaking how powerful the sword is. Number 34. One issue that was solved while making a new problem is this nice example. When the shield is thrown, cap style, it bounces off enemies and walls before coming back to you. However, in the Asphodel level, there are very little walls around you, so it couldn't really bounce back anywhere near as quickly. Number 35. So the team fixed this by upping the speed of the shield's return. But in doing so, they created a bug. This bug meant that the shield would hurt you upon its return because it was going so fast. I've been fallen! Which, you know, would make sense physically, but it's still annoying in a game. Number 36. The second major update, the Good Times update, included Dionysus, who is the god of wine, as well as a new weapon, the Adamant Rail. Number 37. The lore behind the Adamant Rail is that it's a historical precursor to other firearms, and was locked away by the gods because it's so dangerous. Number 38. There were intense creative discussions over whether or not Zagreus would float while using the Adamant Rail, and we all know which side won because in the end in the game he doesn't. His feet are firmly on the floor, and he's not able to run and gun at the same time. Number 39. By the way, the old runes on the Sword of Zagreus each represent a different one of the first generation of the Greek gods. Number 40. The long spear enemies were designed before the rest of Elysium, the area in which they live, but actually their first design rendered it invisible, as they matched the colours of the area too well. They managed to fix the textures in time and made them a slightly different colour, but there was going to be a quick fix originally of inverting all of its colours at once, so instead of being black, it was a brilliant white. Number 41. 
So the tweaking fixes machine was coming along quite nicely. And then along came 2020, March 2020 to be precise, along with a killer virus which forced them to all work from home. Supergiant wanted to release many of the different console versions of Hades at the same time, but this rather sullied that a little bit. The meaning of life. In June of 2020, the Supergiant offices in San Francisco were broken into and robbed. This didn't disrupt the flow as much as one might think, given the fact they were all working from home and a lot of hardware was with them. But still, can't be a nice feeling, can it? Number 43. Hades for the Nintendo Switch was announced on the 18th of August 2020 on a Nintendo Indie World stream where a new trailer was debuted. Ooh, fancy. Ooh, that click never gets old. Number 44. Alrighty then, so this is a roguelike game, and with roguelike comes bosses. So who will you be fighting on your way through the underworld? Well, the first boss, or bosses technically, you come across in the game are the Fury Sisters, Megera, Electo, and the exquisitely eloquent Tisiphone. Now don't worry, you don't have to fight all three at once, it's just randomly selected to be one of them. Number 45. Actually, well, uh, no, that's actually, that's partially true. Electo and Tisiphone only start turning up when Meg has been beaten enough times. Meg is actually the one Zag is closest to, as she's his ex-lover. Number 46. Meg's sisters, unlike Meg herself, do not appear in the House of Hades hub. This is why, when you kill them, they turn into bats and disappear and aren't absorbed by the sticks. Number 47. You'd also fully romance Meg if you give her enough nectar and ambrosia. Neither of them euphemisms. If you fully romance Thanatos, more on him later, you can be in a polyamorous relationship with both of them at the same time. Everybody wins. Number 48. In Greek mythology, these guys are known as the Irenias or the Furies, who are symbolic of vengeance and retribution, and each of them punish a different transgression. Number 49. Megara says she is born of Titan blood in the game, which is actually true to be fair to her. In Greek mythology, the Furies are born from the spilt blood of the Titan Uranos. Let's play another round of Is There a Pee Pee? Woo! Yeah! No, not today, it's just a bee! Yeah. The embodiment of the planet Earth itself. Number 50. Megaera's transgression that she likes to punish for is betrayal. In fact, her name even comes from the Greek word Megaero, which means to begrudge or to envy. In the game, she punishes oath breakers and those guilty of infidelity, or betrayal. Number 51. Electo is banned from the House of Hades because of her past behaviour. This could be a nice nod to the fact that her transgression is passion, can be interpreted as anger. Number 52. Finally, there's Tisiphone. Her name is a mashup of the Greek words Tesis, which means vengeance, and Phonos, which means murder. And when you hear her dialogue, that's pretty spot on. Her role is the tormentor of murder. Number 53. In the next area, Asphodel, you have to beat this bony boy, the Bone Hydra. Originally, when the game was first released, he was the final boss available. Number 54. Later on in the game, Zag can nickname the Bone Hydra after defeating him a few times. Sadly, you can't choose this nickname yourself. I'd have gone for Bone Saw or Big Bone Boy. But no, you have to choose it and it has to be Lurney. Number 55. But why Lurney? Well, that's because this is what's left of the Lurnian Hydra, who Hercules had to kill way, way back as part of his trials in Greek mythology. Number 56. Then we get to Elysium, where you have to fight two bosses at once, because obviously it was too easy before, right? This time it's Theseus and Asterius. One a Minotaur and the other just a just a wee lad. Number 57. Now here's something interesting though. These guys are working together here like good bros, but in Greek mythology, Theseus is famous for not only founding Athens, but also slaying a Minotaur. Number 58. In the arena when fighting Asterius and Theseus, there's one shade fella in the crowd who appears to be your biggest fan, with a little Zacharias banner that's hidden underneath all the others that is so pure. Number 59. You can actually count how many rooms you have to go through before each boss. It's 14 rooms to the Fury Sisters battle in Tartarus, 24 chambers until the fight against the Bone Hunter and Asphodel, and 36 chambers until Zag is pitted against Asterius and Theseus. Number 60. And finally, there's actual Daddy Hades himself. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. I, Yeah. Anyway, Hades has a weapon which is a bident. In other words, a trident, but with two prongs instead of three. This weapon is used symbolically throughout the underworld, even in the design of Hades' beard. Number 61. It's worth noting, by the way, in the mythology, he's the god of the dead and the king of the underworld. He's not the god of death, though. That is Thanatos, who we will talk about in a little bit. Number 62. One of the things you can do to help out in big fights is summon characters, which you get the ability to do from giving gifts to certain people and gods. However, against Hades, none of them will show up because it's essentially like fighting their family or boss. Well, actually, Baldy and Skelly will, but still. 
Number 63. This lack of showing up can also happen for story reasons. For example, if in the narrative the character is not in the House of Hades, for a story-based reason, they'll pull a no-show on you. Nintendo 64. The bosses keep track of how many times you beat them and the conditions of it, as revealed in occasional dialogue. For example, Meg will say that some of the wins against her don't count because of the advantages from the mirror. You know, the one you used to power up. That one. Number 65. Thing is, escaping the underworld is of course bloody hard, literally bloody, <laughs> but luckily you have help. Help in the form of the Olympian gods, who are that big dysfunctional family I mentioned earlier. Number 66. There are others though, like Dusa, who is a maid in the house of Hades. Just in case you don't get the joke, she's Maid Dusa. Medusa? Medusa. You get it. At one point she mentions that while she's just a head now, she did once have a body and was a gorgon, just like Medusa from Greek mythology. Number 67. But the gods. Alright, let's start with Zeus. King of the Olympians and Greek god of thunder, and so gives you lightning boons, which genuinely never fails to annoy me. Thunder and lightning are completely different. If Zeus and Thor, which I know is in Greek, but anyway, are all electric and stuff, they should be the god of lightning, not thunder. Anyway, presented as a misogynistic bigot in Hades, as in most translations, he's lauded as a hero and a ladies man, whilst with today's attitudes, he's definitely just a little bit of a creep. Number 68. Poseidon is also there. Zeus's brother, and therefore Zagreus's uncle, is the god of the seas, earthquakes, and horses. Yeah. In the game, he gives you water-based boons, but no horses, sadly, although he is wearing a horse crown, which is a nice little nod, but not as good as a horse. Number 69, Zagreus. Athena is the goddess of wisdom, and so gives Zag the uh, wisdom to deflect attacks back at others. Although actually in Greek myth, she's also the goddess of warfare. Not war, that's someone else. We'll cover them in a bit. Number 70. Fun Greek mythological fact for you here, Athena is best known for assisting in the creation of the Trojan horse. You know, where the Greek warrior sneaked into Troy in a giant wooden horse disguised as a gift? That's nowhere in the game, of course, because this game hates horses, but hey. Number 71. Athena was born when Zeus got a headache, and Hephaestus split his head open with an axe, at which point Athena was fully grown and born. This is referenced in the game when Demeter, we'll get to her in a bit, says that Athena, warrior goddess, sprang from Zeus's head. It's not really referenced, just literally explaining it. Number 72. Athena gives you an owl as a gift. Owls are wise, like she is, you know, goddess of wisdom. And her symbol is a shield, which refers to her goddesshood, and the fact she deflects attacks away. Number 73. The rather lovely Aphrodite can help out Zag too, giving him the boon of charming, which can lessen enemy attacks and even make some fight for you. Number 74. Aphrodite is naked in the game, I know, fwit fwu indeed, but calm down. This is because Aphrodite also appears nude in the most famous depictions of her, like the Venus de Milo and the birth of Venus. By the way, Venus and Aphrodite are the same, Venus is just her Roman name. Okay, we clear? Good. Number 75. Then there's Artemis, the child of Zeus, twin sister of Apollo, goddess of the hunt, who gives you little homing arrows. Thanks, Artie. Number 76. Ares is the god of war, not warfare like her sister. In Greek mythology, he's all about sadism, this lad. In fact, Athena says in Hades that she finds him quite disturbing, which is probably a reference to this sadism streak. Number 77. Ares and Aphrodite in Greek mythology had quite a long-lasting affair, actually. Love and war are... This is referenced in the game by the fact that their interactions, if their boons are both available, are quite on the flighty side. But then that's kind of standard for Aphrodite, really, so... Number 78. Dionysus, who gives my favourite boons in the game in the form of Hangover, is the god of both wine and madness. In Greek mythology, he's both of those things, but also fertility, orchards, fruit, vegetation, ritual madness, whatever the heck that is, religious ecstasy, festivity, and theatre. He's got a lot on his plate. He's also known as Bacchus, god of wine, and I am Bacchus's friend. Number 79. Dionysus has a leopard print draped over his shoulder in Hades, which is a nice nod to Greek mythology's Dionysus, who often had leopards and other cats alongside him. Number 80. He's also holding a stick with a pine cone on the top. Now, this isn't something he just made at an arts and craft workshop at Centre Parks. In Greek mythology, this is called a thyrsus, and is a symbol of fertility, which, remember, is one of the many, many things he's a god of. Number 81. Now Dionysus and Zagreus are kind of linked in Greek mythology, so linked in fact it's often thought they were the same person, but it's all very confusing and nobody knows if that was the case or not. This is referenced in the game by the fact Dionysus asks Zag to trick Orpheus the Bard into believing they're the same person. Number 82. Hermes gives Zag speed boost, which is kind of his thing, what with being the messenger of the gods and the god of swiftness. That's also why that company Hermes is called Hermes, you know, they deliver stuff. Number 83. 
Hermes wears special shoes to give him his big old speed. Those shoes are called Talaria. In Greek mythology, Hermes lent them to Perseus to defeat Medusa. So let's hope there's no bad blood there. Number 84. Demeter is the goddess of the seasons and gives you some powers more frosty than a passive aggressive ice cream. In Greek mythology, she's a sibling of Zeus, Hades and Poseidon. But weirdly, she's also the mother of Persephone, who is Zagreus' mother. This is changed in game though, because otherwise Persephone is simultaneously Zag's mother, aunt and grandmother. And it just feels a bit weird, doesn't it, in a modern context, even though mythologically that thing happened all the time. Number 85. Charon is the silent but deadly chap who appears as a sort of merchant. He's the boatman on the river Styx, you know, the one that Zag falls into when he dies. He's technically a god and is the child of Nyx, who Zag thought was his own mum. Number 86. In ancient Greece, folks would put coins in the mouth of the deceased when they were buried so they would pay Charon to ferry them to the underworld. This toll payment is referenced in the skulls on the death screen too, and Skelly, who is a skeleton, still has his coin in his mouth too. Number 87. Charon is actually a secret boss fight too. At some point late on in the game, in a Charon room, you'll find an option to borrow 300 gold. Should you do this, Charon becomes very indeed unhappy and whisks you away to beat the living, or I guess not living, snot out of you. Should you win the fight, you get to keep the gold and get a discount though. So, you know, just like in real life if you shoplift. Number 88. You can find Hypnos in the House of Hades, and while he doesn't give you any specific, you know, powers or stuff, he's a minor god in the world of Greek mythology, specifically of sleep. Must be a dull, dull guy. Number 89. He does have poppies on his belt though if you look carefully. Now this is a reference to the Waterhouse painting Sleep and his half-brother Death, where he has poppies in his hand and on the table. It's also said that the entrance to Hypnos' underworld cave was lined with poppies. Number 90. No, Thanatos, another minor Greek god, is far more interesting than Hypnos. Thanatos is the god of death, but of peaceful death, you know, instead of violent, horrible ends. Number 91. Thanatos and Zag can actually become lovers in the game if he's romanced enough. Before this though, they were childhood friends, which is... Ah, that's adorable, isn't it? Number 92. Thanatos helped Zag fight the monsters of the underworld in the form of a competition using his big scythe. In Greek myth though, Thanatos never had a big scythe. Dun dun dun. It's likely a nice reference to the Grim Reaper. Number 93. As we mentioned earlier, Chaos is also in the game too. But Chaos isn't necessarily a god. Chaos is just the embodiment of everything before the universe was made which is why they look pretty weird and confusing too. Number 94. As if you didn't already think this was the game that had everything, you can go fishing too. Only a certain point's mind and you can't eat the fish. You can just get the power-ups from the chef if you give them the carcass. Number 95. So like many other stories, this one has an ending, but unlike others, it has more than one. Specifically, there's the ending, an unlockable true ending, and a post-game extra ending too. Number 96. After this true ending, which I won't go into here, you can get a new condition from the contractors called Extreme Measures 4. Doing this makes things a lot, lot harder than usual, and a new variation of Hades as the final boss, who is also way, way harder than usual. Number 97. But how quickly can one get to these endings? Well, the fastest speed run on a fresh file for the game on normal mode currently stands at 19 minutes and 49 seconds, set by American player Vareem on PC. Coincidentally, he also holds the fastest fresh file game on Hell Mode 2 at 23 minutes and 7 seconds. Number 98. It's hard to overstate how much people love Hades. For instance, on Metacritic, who collate lots of reviews together and put a nice little bow on top, it has a rating of 93. Number 99. When the game was eventually launched on Steam in Early Access, it was at 98% strongly approval rate, which is borderline unheard of. Number 100. In fact, it was loved so much, the game was nominated for and won several awards, including Critics' Choice at the Golden Joystick Awards of 2020, Best Indie at the Game Awards, Best Game at the British Academy Games Awards. It's good, basically. Number 101. Uh, hmm. Oh, and how could I forget? A little info about Cerberus, an absolutely good boy who admittedly quite badly guards the gates. He has three heads, but is voiced by four different dogs, named Solo, Higgins, Regis, and Marzipan. Get those dogs treats, stat. So those were 101 facts about Hades. Have you played the game? If you have, who's your favourite god? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to 101 facts if you haven't done so already. There's a party up in here, let me tell you that for free and for nothing, which also is the same thing as free. In the meantime though, two videos on screen that are really going to wet your whistle. Why not watch it and then give your whistle a good old dry afterwards? I'll see you there. Goodbye.